Hi everyone, welcome to another screencast for A2PE Exercise Physiology. Today we're looking at ergogenic aids and in particular looking at diet manipulation. Uh, as you're working in pairs for the next couple of weeks, uh, please watch the screencast. Please bring uh, any notes you make to the lesson and in the lesson we're doing additional research on top of what you get from the screencast today to make sure you have everything you need to uh, answer uh, a question on uh, diet manipulation in the exam. Okay, here we go. Okay, so first of all we need to define what is an ergogenic aid. And basically an ergogenic aid is a performance enhancement aid that enhances performance. Now it can be anything ranging from uh, like a skin tight swimsuit as uh, we have Michael Phelps uh, modelling here or to uh, an ice bath. We've got Mo Farah in uh, the ice bath as well. And we'll be looking at these aids over the next couple of weeks either in the screencasts or in lessons time. Okay, so what you need to know uh, in order to answer a six mark question or even a 20 mark question on ergogenic aids. And you need to know this, the aid itself, what the positive and the negative effects are, which perform and benefits most from the aid, the legal status, i.e. is it legal or not legal, and your ability to critically evaluate. Now could you possibly uh, jot that table down onto a piece of paper because over the next couple of screencasts and in lessons you are going to be using this type of table to get your knowledge down to help you with revision. Okay, so this table is really, really important. Right, Gio, let's look at dietary manipulation and in particular looking at pre-competition uh, things that we can do to increase uh, success in sport. So basically we're looking at carbohydrate loading which some of you may have come across or even experienced uh, in your sports activities. Now, carbohydrate loading is basically a process which you do which increases the body's glycogen stores prior to an event. Now most of you probably heard about eating loads of pasta and things like that before an event. Yes that is carbohydrate loading to an extent and uh, you know your knowledge around this might to do with eating lots of carbohydrates, pasta for example, uh, leading up to an event which we will look at in the next couple of slides. Okay we're looking at the actual process of carbohydrate loading before a competition and it kind of is based around like a 10 day method. Um, so let's look at this kind of uh, carbohydrate loading method uh, to kind of manipulate your success in sport. So first of all you do a high intensity uh, exercise seven days before your event or your race which depletes your glycogen stores. So high intensity exercise seven days before your event which depletes your glycogen stores. After that you eat a diet high in fats and proteins for three days and in doing this you fully deprive your muscles of carbohydrates as you're not eating that much or any carbohydrates for three days. And in doing this, this increases the activity of an enzyme that we haven't covered but it's an enzyme called glycogen synthase which helps break down glycogen within your body which is really important to kind of access those, those glycogen and glucose stores when you're beginning to exercise. Okay, so after these three days you eat a three to four days diet high in carbohydrates and lows of fluid, i.e. water, and a diet low in fats and proteins. And what this does, it basically loads your muscle with glycogen. And the benefits of this are that it increases your glycogen storage within your liver or your kidneys, which you can gain access to through the uh, lactic acid system and the aerobic system for those kind of long duration activities. Okay, that's pre-competition. Let's look at uh, diet manipulation kind of on competition day. Now 
some of you may have done this already you eat a uh, some food before you go out and play sport perhaps some pasta or some rice for example well a carbohydrate rich meal two to four hours before an event tops up your liver glycogen stores it's really important not to eat a, a meal um, kind of you know just before uh, an event because that could be actually uh, detrimental to your performance and as you go through uh, your event like a marathon for example it's really important to take in kind of small amounts of food or drink that is high in carbohydrates to replenish those glycogen stores but it's only necessary to do that if your uh, activity is over 45 minutes so there's no need to kind of you know taking this extra extra kind of amounts of carbohydrates if your exercise activity is less than 45 minutes long and you can do this in a variety of ways through gels through sports drinks like Lucasade or through simple foods like uh, banana okay so that's kind of diet manipulation on competition day now which some of you should do as you're doing as you uh, do your exercise which I know that most of you do you should take regular amounts of fluid on board because you dehydrate significantly during prolonged uh, bouts of exercise and what you're looking to do when you're taking this fluid is to replace something called electrolytes within your body now electrolytes are like salts that are lost uh, when you sweat and these need to be replaced through fluids like water like glucosate drinks like gels to keep the electrolytes i.e. salt concentrations in your body constant that's really important guys if you need to know anything more about that please jump on the internet and do your research around the electrolytes okay but it's additional information that you need to know okay so fluid intake you can take there are three kind of varieties of energy drink that we need to know about one is called a hypotonic drink which has four percent glucose in it so not too high and this is mainly used for people who participate in prolonged periods of exercise there's another one called uh, isotonic which has between five to seven percent of glucose which is the amount of glucose that is normally in your blood anyway so you're kind of replacing like for like and this is suitable to put to people who are participating in quite long endurance events like a marathon for example or a, a football match or a netball match and then we have hypertonic which contains loads of glucose 19 percent that's quite difficult to digest during a, a sport or activity so that's mainly used as a recovery drink okay look at the difference between the glucose levels the hypertonic one is used as a, as a recovery drink to replenish your glycogen stores okay so what happens after you exercise then what do you do how do you replace your glycogen stores well a liquid or a meal supplement that is high in carbohydrates needs to be taken in the first two hours to help replenish all your glycogen or glucose stores that's really really important you take those fluids or some simple foods on board however depending on the intensity and duration of your exercise will depend on what you actually need to drink or eat so if you're doing a marathon for example that lasts three three and a half hours long four hours long yes you've got to take a lot of fluid or meal supplements on board however if it's a football match then perhaps not so much but it depends on the intensity and duration and your choice between drink or meal uh, a lot of people these days perhaps take a, uh, a quick fluid drink on board or gels for example or some food that's high in carbohydrates as opposed to a massive meal but it depends on what you need to replace okay so what you need to know for what we've covered so far there's a few things on the screen just now that you need to take down there, are, there is more to it which we'll look at in lessons and which you'll do your own research around but uh, those are a couple of positive effects and a negative effect and who benefits from it okay it's completely legal and a lot of high level athletes do uh, carbo load before their events okay if you want to know even more which I'm sure you do 
there's some recent research about how milk better uh, rehydrates you after exercise. Okay, there's some good stuff on that. There's a program on Channel 4 about it quite recently. Have a look at salt loading prior to exercise. And again, there's some research uh, on the internet about the positive effects of that. Okay, guys, that's it for uh, kind of uh, carbohydrate loading for now. Please bring your notes, and I'll see you in lesson.